ये माता जी ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय उदीर नाषु भद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भक्ति नीति मेटीरियल मैनिफेस्टेशन अल्टीमेट a uh, particular which is individual and not formed into a body is called the atom it exists always as an individual identity even after the dissolution of all forms the material body is but the material body is but a combination of such atoms but it is a misunderstood by the common man text 2 atoms are the ultimate state of the manifest manifest universe when they stay in their own forms without forming different bodies they are called the ultimate oneness they are certainly different bodies in physical forms but the atoms themselves from the complete manifestation text 3 one can estimate time by measuring the movement of the atomic combination of the bodies time is the potency of the ultimate a uh, almighty personality of godhead hari who controls all physical movement although he is not visible in the physical world text 4 atomic time is measured according to its covering a particular atomic space that time which covers the unmanifest unmanifest aggregate of the atom is called the great time text 5 the division of the cross time is calculated as follows two atoms make one double atom and the three double atoms make one hexa atom the hexa atom is visible in the sunshine which enters through the hole of a window screen one can clearly see that the hexa atom goes up towards the sky x6 the time duration needed for the integration of the three uh, Treasurance is called a truti, and one hundred trutis make one veda. Three vedas make one lava. X seven. The duration of the time of the three lavas is equal to one nimisha. The combination of three nimishas make one krishna. Five krishnas combined together make one krista, and fifteen krastas make one laghu. X eight. Fifteen lagus make one. Uh, Nathika, which is also called a dhanda, two dhandas make one uh, muhurta, and six or seven dhandas make one fourth of a day or night, according to the human calculation. Six nine. The measuring pot for one Nathika or dhanda can be prepared with a six pala weight, fourteen ounces pot of copper, in which a hole is bored uh, with a gold rocket weigh weighing. Four masses and measuring four fingers long. When the pot is placed on water, the time before the water overflows in the pot is called one dhanda. Extend. It is calculated that the that there are four ah uh, pranas uh, which are which are also called yamas in the day and four in the night for the human being. Similarly, fifteen days and nights are a four night. And there are two four nights, white and black, in a month. Text eleven. The uh, aggregate of two four nights is one month, and that period is one complete day and night for it. Ah, uh, for the Pitta planets, two of such months ah uh, compress one season. The six months compress one complete moment of the sun from south to north. Text twelve. Two solar moments make one day and night of the demigods. 
And that combination of day and night is one complete calendar year of for the human being. The human being has a duration of the life of 100 years. X13. Infiltrated stars, planets, illuminaries, and autumns all over the universe are rotating in their respective orbits under the directions of the Supreme, uh, represented by the eternal Kala. Text 14. There are five open names for the orbits of the sun, moon, star, and illuminaries in the uh, firmament, and they each have their own uh, Sama Vastra. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hmm. Thank you, Radha Ramataji, for uh, reading the translation. <laughs> Hare Krishna, thank you all for joining for today's uh, Bhagavatam call. So, today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, chapter 11, titled Calculation of Time from the Atom, Sloka 1 to 40. <laughs> <laughs> Om Agnati Mirandasya Gnananjana Salakaya Chakshur Van Militam Yena Tasmay Sri Vurave Namaha Namo Mishna Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirivishesha Sunyavadi Paschatta Deshatarani Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sadi Gauravaktarunda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. <coughs> so just to give a background, so in the previous chapter, so Vidra asked uh, how Lord Brahma created uh, different planet systems or different uh, living entities uh, <coughs> and Maitreya Muni enlightened me. Uh, Vidura with those narrations, like how the Lord Brahma's creation happened. There are nine types of uh, <clears throat> uh, creations and three types of annihilations like that. And in this chapter, Maitreya Muni is giving information about the different measurements of time. <clears throat> so in this earth planet or on the different planets and uh, Manu's time and then Lord Brahma's time like that. <clears throat> So, in the sloka 1, we see that uh, uh, the material manifestation ultimate particle is uh, called atom. <clears throat> and this atom is indivisible and one atom doesn't form into a body. So, and it is uh, invis invisible um, even after the dissolution of all forms. <clears throat> so, even the material body is dissolved, but the atoms still stay there. So, the material world is but a combination of such atoms. But generally, people misunderstood uh, this thing. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, Vidra is mentioning here, I mean, Maitreya Muni is mentioning here that the uh, smallest particle uh, in this uh, universe that we can see is uh, atom, <clears throat> like Paramanu. And that's ultimate particle. <clears throat> it's the smallest and ultimate particle. <clears throat> And it is in, indivisible and invisible. <clears throat> so even the we see that the modern scientists also, they also say that the smallest particle is uh, atom, paramount. <clears throat> so, and I heard that, you know, this uh, concept of atom, uh, the Western countries, uh, they got it from the Greek philosophy. Like there was one philosopher uh, uh, from Greek, uh, Democritus. So he proposed this... Uh, uh, Greek word called atomos. Atomos uh, in the Greek means it is uncuttable. So you cannot cut it. So it's indivisible. <clears throat> so uh, so that, that's what they have used this one. The Western countries, they have used it and then call it as atom. <clears throat> so he also explains that, uh, Democritus explains that uh, matter was eventually reducible to small particle called atomos. Uh, and it it is uh, mentioned that uh, so those days in those days uh, uh, Greek uh, philosophy has uh, um, <clears throat> they they get this information from our Indian Vedic literatures so <clears throat> so uh, looks like even the 
autonomous information also coming from our Indian Vedic literature, like Paraman, which is uncuttable. Mm -hmm. So that's, not only this, I think they have a few other uh, um, uh, <clears throat> concepts also that they got from uh, our Vedic literature called reincarnation and one should eat vegetarian only like Pythagoran theory. So, so some of the, those things uh, are coming from uh, our Indian Vedic literature to Greek philosophy. <clears throat> So in this uh, uh, purport also, Prabhupada mentions that uh, before the scientists found this uh, atom, of course, we see it here in the Bhagavatam, but even before the scientists also, they, there is uh, one philosopher called Kanada. So he proposed this Paramanu Vada, so the atomic uh, philosophy. So, <clears throat> so that this information is there in Bhagavatam uh, and our Indian Vedic literature or philosopher they have already given that. Of course, the Western countries, the modern scientists, now they, after that, they found this atom like that. But the modern scientists, of course, they are very curious to know about this universe. So they explore and they come up with this atomic theory. But generally, their exploration is for the exploitation of the nature, not for finding out the ultimate cause of this universe who is behind that like that. So they generally uh, explore it for their own sense gratification. Like they invented now the electric vehicles. So they dig a lot of uranium from the mother earth, <clears throat> but it's for their enjoyment. They are not generally, they are not interested in uh, finding out who is behind this wonderful creation, <clears throat> the Supreme Lord like that. <clears throat> but from our Vedic literature, sir, not only we get this uh, uh, wonderful information, but also it gives the knowledge uh, in such a way that we can understand that the individual living entities, the conditioned souls in this material world. So they are very minute and there is a supreme personality of Godhead who is uh, unlimited and our uh, constitutional position is uh, to turn towards Krishna and serve him so that we can experience unlimited happiness. <clears throat> so that we can get from the Vedic literature. <clears throat> And other point here mentioned is that uh, with one atom, uh, it doesn't form into a body. So generally the material body is a uh, group of atoms. So many atoms gather together and form into a, a body. <laughs> so that's why uh, here it is mentioned that uh, so generally a common man is misunderstood. So we think that we are this body. <clears throat> so we don't think that it is a group of atoms. <clears throat> but more than that, we miss that uh, uh, we are not only this uh, group of atoms or the uh, gross body, but we are powerful spirit soul. So that we miss it. So even if we calculate based on the group of atoms, uh, our body might be worth of uh, uh, some couple of hundred dollars, not more than that. But is it really so like now? But we can see from the Vedic letters that we are more, more, much powerful and valuable than, than a like couple of hundred dollars. <clears throat> because we are Heart and parcel of Supreme Lord Krishna. <clears throat> Very powerful. So that is what misunderstood by the common man. So that's why an Acharya comes. Like if we see Prabhupada's most of the lectures, he speaks on this basic point. Because it's very hard to realize, at least uh, for myself. Uh, but this is very important to understand. That we are not the group of the atoms. Uh, we are uh, The gra grass body might be the group of atoms. But we are... Uh, very powerful spirit soul. <clears throat> so if we don't understand that, then we uh, indulge in our uh, bodily concept of uh, eating, sleeping, mating, and depending, like ahar, nidra, bhai, And then we miss the great opportunity of making this valuable and important human life, <clears throat> which is uh, endowed with uh, high intelligence and high consciousness. So that will go waste if we don't understand this point. So another point is the scientists miss that. Uh, so where did all these atoms came? So they miss that, you know, uh, they don't uh, get that information or they are not able to find out or they don't understand. And we can see this from this Bhagavatam that they are all coming from the Supreme Lord. So it's energy of the Supreme Lord. <laughs> and another thing is uh, apart from this material atom, there is another atom which is spirit soul that is also cannot be cut into pieces now we hear from Bhag bhagavad gita Amad, krishna mentions uh, 
that the spirit soul <clears throat> is like uh, uh, cannot be cut into pieces and can't be burned by fire or wet by water like that. It's also very smallest particle, you know. Uh, we, we hear from scriptures that this is one, one divided by 10,000 of tip of air. But it is very superior atom than this material atom. And in fact, due to this uh, spiritual atom, all these material atoms are working. <laughs> Another thing is, uh, um, scriptures mentions that uh, how are these atoms are combined together? Because Krishna is there in each and every atom. Anantarastu paramanu chanantarastam govindam madhi purusham tamaham vacham. So that's why they can all be together uh, combined. <laughs> So, is there in each and every atom? <clears throat> so, that's another thing that they miss it. That's why Prabhupada mentions in the purport that this Srimad Bhagavatam is the full text of all descriptions of knowledge, including the theory of atomism. So, that's why this uh, Vedic literature gives very wonderful information. And then in the text uh, 2, Sloka 2, uh, Maitreya Muni is mentioning that uh, these alt atoms are ultimate state of the manifest universe. So when they stay in their own forms without forming, forming different bodies, they are unlimited oneness. So when they are stay together in, in their individual single atom, they look the quality is same. So, but when they are certainly different bodies in physical form, uh, when they are grouped together, then they create different bodies. But the atoms themselves form the complete manifestation. So, not only the uh, individual bodies, but they also are the complete manifestation of this universe. <clears throat> and in the text uh, 3, we see that uh, uh, here we see the how this uh, time is started. Like, you know, one can estimate time by measuring the movements of the atomic combination of the bodies. Uh, and also, this uh, time is the uh, <clears throat> potency of the Supreme Lord, Hari who controls all, all physical moments, although he is not visible in the physical world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so time is very powerful. So we see that, you know, in this material world also, uh, the time brings people together and the same time also separates the people together. Like when we are child, we have probably have a couple of friends, which, we, which they are not there now. Like, you know, they are probably living somewhere else and we are living somewhere else. So at that time, we are all together. And after some time, they are all separated. <clears throat> so it's very, very powerful. <clears throat> so Prabhupada mentions in the purport that uh, this from a small atom to the whole universe, everything is under the control of the time. And this is uh, another form of Krishna. Of course, it's an uh, impersonal feature. <clears throat> and Krishna also mentions in Bhagavad Gita, right? Kalos Miloka Kshaya Krita Prabhupada. Like he says that I am the time, destroyer of the worlds. <clears throat> So, the time will destroy in due course of time uh, each and everything. So, it is also mentioned in Bhagavatam, right? You know, Ayurarati Vai Pumsam, like you know, each sunrise and sunset, one is becoming closer to the death for uh, one day. So, they are closer to death for uh, 24 hours. <clears throat> but the person who utilizes their time in uh, Krishna consciousness, uh, they are not closer to death, they are closer to Supreme Lord Krishna. So that's why they are not wasting their time. So their time is utilized with perfect purpose. So instead of they becoming closer to death, they are they are becoming closer to Krishna. So that's why it is uh, stressed that uh, the time should be used for the best purpose. And we hear Chanika Pandita says that uh, even a slight fraction of time cannot be purchased with millions of dollars. So that's why he says that every moment of time should be utilized uh, uh, without uh, with with a great profit, it should not be utilized without any profit. We utilize it without any profit, then we lose it, and then we cannot get it even with the millions of dollars. So that's why it's very much stressed that it should be used for the best purpose. That's why Prabhupada man says that you give this one lifetime, then you don't need to go through any suffering. Janma mrittu jara vyadi dukkha doshana darshan. So instead you will. Uh, go through the unlimited bl bliss, Brahma, Sokya, Manantam, like that. So, in the text 4, uh, we see that uh, Maitreya is telling that the atomic time, so this is the measurement is started, is uh, measured 
according to its covering a particular atomic space. So that time which covers the unmanifest aggregate of atoms is called the great time. So here yeah, two or two times are mentioned. So one is the and Prabhupada mentions in the purport that uh, the time and space are two correlative uh, items. Like uh, the standardly the time is calculated in terms of the moment of the sun. So here the time that is covered by the sun in passing over of, over of one atom is called atomic time. <clears throat> the sun passing over one atom is called atomic time. <clears throat> Similarly, the complete calculation of the time of creation, maintenance and dissolution. So that's called supreme kala, so the great time. Of course, in between atomic time and this maha kala or supreme time, so there are many calculations which we see like, you know, Truti, Lava, Nimesha, Murta, like that. So it's like that, you know, when you calculate weight, so you have many terms of measurements, like 1 kg, 10 kg, 100 kg, like that, <clears throat> and also grams, like that. So similarly, the time measurements also, between atomic time and then Mahakala, we have so many different types of uh, uh, measurements. So that we will see in this uh, future slokas here. So in text 5, we see that, uh, uh, the gross time how it is calculated like you know two atoms it makes one double atom and such three double atoms are called hexatom that's called thrasharain and the hexatom is visible in sunshine which enters through the holes of window screen and this one can clearly see that the hexatom uh, goes up towards the sky <laughs> And Prabhupada mentions in the purport that this is a single atom, we may not be able to see it because it's invisible for our eyes. But such kind of one atoms, like six of them are combined together, then it's called Thrasharain or hexatom. So th that is visible. <clears throat> so that is visible. So uh, And Prabhupada mentions that that can be seen, of course, in this uh, uh, purport, you see that. Uh, is visible sunshine which enters through the holes of a window screen. <clears throat> so in the text 6, uh, we see that the time duration needed for the integration of three thrasharanis, thrasharanis means exatom, is called truti. And those kind of trutis, uh, when we have 100 of them, then it makes veda and three vedas called lava. So these are the, some time measurements of course we may probably hear in the scriptures yeah. like uh, truti or lava like that <laughs> like sometimes we say that you know uh, this person has missed the dangerous situation in a truti so in that that's a common word sometimes people in india uses it <clears throat> and we hear this uh, lava also in the scriptures like uh, um, chaitanya charitamrita we see that you know uh, sadhu sangha sadhu sangha sarva shastra haikaya Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhi Saya. I like that, you know. Uh, when one takes uh, even uh, uh, one, one lava uh, time of association with a great saintly personalities, then their life, their life will be successful. So they, they will get benefited greatly and they can make their human life successful. So that's uh, stressing the importance of the devotees association. Like we see here right, from the scriptures also, like uh, by taking the association of Srila Prabhupada, so many hippies be became happy. And similarly, we see from the scriptures, like, you know, by taking the association of Narada Muni, this great hunter, uh, Ratnakara became Valmiki Mahamuni, or Murugari, who is a uh, uh, animal killer, he becomes a great saintly personality like that. <laughs> um, and the uh, duration of uh, three lavas uh, is equal to one nimesha. Because this nimesha is not the same as uh, uh, the modern scientist nimesha or minute. Um, and the combination of three nimeshas is called kshana. And five kshanas are combined together is one kasta. And 15 kastas means one lagu. <laughs> so... Uh, <clears throat> Prabhupada also gives uh, the equivalent uh, time of uh, uh, the modern equivalent time of uh, each uh, Vedic uh, time frame. Like this one lagu Prabhupada mentions is equal to around two minutes. <clears throat> and then uh, 
in the text eight, we see that 15 lagus is called one nadika. And it's also called danda. And two dandas makes one murta. And six or seven dandas make one fourth of one fourth of a day or one fourth of night, according to our human calculations. Yeah, we, we also hear this thing right, in the many places like murta. Now, generally, we whenever they want somebody wants to do some uh, activity, they look for the auspicious murta. We also hear like you know, <clears throat> uh, there what is a rajas or scriptures test that you know. Uh, one should wake up uh, before our Brahma Murta time or before Brahma Murta and get uh, get ready by Brahma Murta time and and then start chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamata or use it for the spiritual purpose. Because Brahma Murta is very, very conducive for the uh, spiritual uh, um, <clears throat> uh, spending, the time spending for spiritual. And Brahma Murta starts uh, one and a half hour before sunrise. And one Mahurta is mentioned is close to 48 minutes. So, <clears throat> like that, there are uh, many Mahurtas in one day, like that. <clears throat> and then in the text 9, uh, we see that uh, there is a, a measurement also, how to measure the danda. Like, you know, uh, it can be prepared with uh, 6 fala weight, 14 ounce part copper, and which hole is bored with a gold probe weighing 4 masses and measuring four fingers long. Uh, and when the part is placed on water, the time before the water overflows in the part is called one danda. So this is uh, um, another way to measure the uh, time. So, so in the olden days, uh, uh, they have this uh, way to um, calculate the time also. <clears throat> like uh, when these watches are not there, like you know, in the olden days, we see that when the sun is rising on the side, uh, eastern side, then the daytime is started. So when the sun is uh, uh, setting on the western side, then the nighttime is starting. When the sun is in the middle of uh, uh, the sky, then it is afternoon like that, you know. So olden day people do not work very hard, you know. <clears throat> so when the sunset happens, they take rest. They don't go through the, all this uh, hard work and modern using modern uh, um, instruments, all these things. Uh, uh, so nowadays people travel far away, am I right? For uh, uh, working uh, <clears throat> and to maintain their family like that. But Vedic lifestyle teaching, simple living and high thinking. So, but modern uh, uh, style uh, lifestyle teaches uh, simply living and no thinking. So they are not utilizing it uh, for the best purpose. <clears throat> and in the text uh, ten, we see that there are four four paharas. <clears throat> Uh, in a day and four praharas in the night time <clears throat> and uh, 15 days and nights is called four, one fortnight and uh, two fortnights uh, is one month one is white and one is black so we see we hear in the olden days uh, the security gods are called praharas <clears throat> because th there is a schedule for every three hours three hours one person is changed so that's why they are called praharas so there is a shift system of course, even today also we have shift system, but may not be three hours, sometimes eight hours like that. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and they also say like in, when the first prahara starts, as soon as the sunrise is begins, then the first prahara start, starts. Like fourth prahara ends uh, in the sunset like that. So similarly, we have four praharas in the night time also. And when those uh, 15 days are combined, then it is called one uh, paksha <clears throat> or fortnight. <clears throat> So we have two pakshas, am I right? Uh, Sukla paksha and Krishna paksha. <clears throat> so Sukla paksha generally is the time uh, uh, that uh, starts from the bright uh, moon to um, <clears throat> of the bright moon. Yeah, it ends on the full full moon day. So it starts with the bright moon. Uh, I'm sorry, the waxing moon and ends in the full moon. <clears throat> and there is a Krishna paksha that also begins of the after Purnima and it ends on Amavasya, like that. <clears throat> so, and then there are, uh, um, when those two months are uh, combined, and that is called uh, one month, and, and this is uh, one complete day of night of Pitta planets. And two such months are combined, uh, combined then it's called one season. 
So we have six months, six seasons uh, in one uh, year. And six months comprise uh, the complete movement of the sun from south to north. So this is the time calculations. So we have uh, <clears throat> two pakshas. So one month. So one month is, uh, uh, is equivalent to the one complete day and night of Pitha planets. So we see that you know their uh, duration of the life uh, is longer uh, because they, their one day is equivalent to one month for us. <clears throat> and two months, of course, uh, each planet has its own different uh, timelines. Like we are uh, like, you know, our six months is equal to one day of heavenly planets like that. So, and of course, Lord Brahma's uh, one day is a uh, thousand Mahayugas for, uh, for us. Uh, Sastra Yuga Pariyantam like that. <clears throat> so each planet has its own uh, uh, time measurements. So according to our Earth planet, one month is equivalent to one day night of Pitta planets. And two such months are one season. So that's why we have uh, six seasons. Like we have a uh, spring, Vasanta Rutu, and then summer, uh, Grishma Rutu like that. Uh, Varsha Rutu, Sharad Rutu, Hemant Rutu, and uh, Shishir Rutu like winter like that. And when six months are combined together, uh, that completes the uh, sun uh, traveling from one side to other side. So from south to north or north to south. So like we have Uttarayanam, like, you know, when the sun starts uh, traveling from north northern direction. So we have uh, Dakshinayanam, when sun travels from onto the south side like that. <clears throat> and we hear from the Bhagavatam also, right? Like Lord, uh, the Vishnu Dev passed uh, um, his life, uh, a grass body on the Uttarayanam time. And then textual, uh, the two solar moments uh, make uh, one day nights of uh, demigods. <clears throat> so one year equivalent to uh, one day of the demigods. So <clears throat> as I said, like, you know, it's a uh, uh, different planet has the, uh, it's different timelines. Uh, but when it is compared with that planet, so full one year uh, is equivalent to, our one year is equivalent to uh, one day of uh, demigods, of course, day and night. So we see that, you know, that's why the demigods uh, in those, the residents in that planets, they live longer life. <clears throat> so as one goes to the upper planet systems, uh, their lifespan is increases. <clears throat> so then we can speak, we can see like, you know, how many years Lord Brahma lives. So trillions of years he lives. <clears throat> but of course, still he has to uh, leave the body. So even though it is long life, but still it is not permanent in this uh, universe. <clears throat> and then in the text uh, 13, we hear that uh, the stars, planets, human areas, and atoms all over the universe are rotating in their respective or orbits under the direction of the Supreme, represented by eternal color. So everything is rotating under the direction of the Supreme Lord. So that's in Brahma Samhita also we see that, you know, sun uh, also rotating uh, on the direction of the Supreme Lord. Achakshura yesa savita sakla grahana raja samasta suramurti asesha teja esse gnaya brahmata samrata kala chakra govindam madhi purusham tamaham bhajami. Like that. So everyone is, uh, uh, everything is uh, happening under the direction of the Supreme Lord. Of course, here it is represented by Kala. And in the text uh, uh, 14, <clears throat> we see that there are five different names of for the orbits like sun, moon, stars, and luminaries. <clears throat> so they have they they each have their own samachara. So each one has a, their own samachara like that. <clears throat> uh, Prabhupada mentions that of course uh, uh, the subject matters of this uh, physics, chemistry, everything uh, that is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam <clears throat> definitely very interesting for the uh, people who are uh, looking for uh, gaining the knowledge related in that subject matter. Uh, but it may not be uh, very deep uh, in this. Uh, um, it's given in the summary form like that, in the summarized. <clears throat> but it is a representation of the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> and Prabhupada also gives uh, uh, the equivalent timing uh, of the Vedic time, uh, equivalent time to the modern scientists. Like uh, one through T is uh, 8 by 13,500 second like that. Uh, he gives like, you know, one lava is 8 by 145 second and one log is 2 minutes like that. <clears throat> so similarly, um, he gives the equivalent time of uh, each and every Vedic literature timelines that we hear like that. 
<coughs> so, and Prabhupada mentions that a human being is expected to live in this Kali Yuga 100 years. So, that's the way the, uh, the controlling measuring of the eternal time. So, but the point uh, here is mentions Prabhupada where this stresses that this time should be utilized it, uh, for the uh, best purpose. And we see that from the um, uh, life of the exalted personalities, Acharyas, uh, uh, that they come into this material world to help us or to inspire us. Like we see from the uh, Lilamatham also how Prabhupada spends his time and he utilizes it everything for the service of uh, Krishna consciousness. So if we following in their footsteps, if we can utilize uh, uh, the time for the best purpose, uh, then we can also uh, achieve the uh, success in this human life and go back home, back to Godhead. So I'll pause it here. Of course, I'm talking to myself all these points. Uh, um, I'll pause it here and we can see in the next uh, session the other uh, time measurements. Um, thank you all for uh, giving this opportunity. Grandra Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Koti Vaishnava Vranda ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Let's